We lift your name on high this morning. And there is no one like you, the sustainer, the creator, the protector God, the redeemer, our savior and our Lord. Bob. 
will come with shouts of acclamation and you will take us home what a joyous what a glorious day that would be until that moment oh God as we are here on this earth our prayer is that Lord that we may leave live each day in anticipation of that one day we would reign with you, Lord. That no matter what happens in our lives, our lives would be a living sacrifice which is acceptable in your sight, O oh God. I pray that we would be able to worship you, Lord, for who you are and what you do in and through our lives. And as the psalmist says in Psalm 95, that you are our shepherd and we are the sheep of your pasture. And you are our creator. We worship you. As we spend some moment, Lord, in listening to your word, we pray that you would speak to all of us. Thank you, Lord, for listening to our prayers. And we ask this prayer in Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And indeed, it's a pleasure to come in the presence of the Lord. And I thank God for this wonderful opportunity that God gave me, enabled me to stand and preach from. And I thank Brother Blessing for giving me this opportunity and to deliver from the word. Before going into the word, let us close our eyes and pray for the today's sermon that God may talk to us what he wants to talk to us, what he wants to give us. Let us pray to God. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful day. We, we thank you for this wonderful morning. Lord, as we come to your presence, Lord, as we are going to listen from your word, Lord, talk to us, speak to us, encourage us, mold us, Lord, and those who are sitting here, they are in great need for your love, Lord. We want, we ask you to touch them and work in their hearts. In Jesus Christ's most precious name we pray, Amen. I would like to take your attention to Ruth chapter 2. Book of Ruth chapter 2. A very, a very beautiful book that I like the most. The whole chapter, the chapter 2, is something about how God works for their beloved ones. Those who love God, how God works for them. Uh, have you opened the book of Ruth? Okay. So, Ruth is a book from Old Testament, a historical book about uh, after the judges and uh, before First Samuel. Before going into Ruth, uh, the chapter, let me uh, explain or let me give you a background about Ruth. Who was she and uh, what was her character? So, Ruth, basically a Moabite lady, a young lady. Who was married to uh, who was married to a uh, Israelite guy, uh, the daughter-in-law of Naomi. So the book starts with the reference of Naomi and her husband and two of her young boys and two uh, daughter-in-laws, Orpha and Ruth. So uh, they were in Moab and uh, Naomi's husband and two of her boys died there. So these two young ladies, they were there with Naomi. And Naomi says, and now you know that my sons have died. They have passed away. So what you have to do, you go back to your own land. Stay there. Go marry someone. Live a good life. And in chapter 1, Orpha, the, uh, the first one, the eldest daughter-in-law, she parted her uh, sister uh, sister-in-law and mother-in-law. But now uh, Ruth, she said, I would not leave you. So there is a verse that I love the most is in chapter 1. And verse 16. Can somebody read for me? Chapter 1, verse 16. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. And your God, my God. The beautiful statement that I love the most is, your God is my God. On that statement, this whole chapter was written. The whole book was written. And the commitment, what she did, and the statement that she said that your God is my God, that we can see how she loved her mother-in-law, and through mother-in-law, how she loved God, God worked in her, in her life. 
And when we come to chapter 2, you know, the thing was, they came back to Israel, uh, Israel, their hometown, Bethlehem, and they were living there. But, you know, as, a, uh, as a widows, they cannot go for work. They have no other income. So uh, Naomi told Ruth to go and gather grain uh, from fields. And on one day, she particularly mentioned her to go in the field of Boaz, a good, wealthy man, a family man, and uh, a relative of Naomi. So she went there to ga uh, gather grains for her dinner or supper, whatever they like to eat, uh, they were eating. Uh, so now uh, when Ruth came to the field, she was with other ladies and other servants and she was gathering the grains for her uh, family. And suddenly the boys came and he asked, who is that young lady? And from there, her life is going to be, going to change. God is changing her life from that moment. And some of uh, the servants said she's a young lady and gave a testimony about her. She's the daughter-in-law of Naomi and all her family, they all died. Now they were the two people, they were remaining. So she came to gather grain. And in uh, verses uh, 8, we can see where Boaz said to Ruth, uh, Ruth uh, verses 8, can someone read the verses 8? Chapter 2, yeah, yeah. Listen to me. Don't go and glean in any other field. And don't go away from here. Next. Okay, stay here with my servant girls. See, I learned four things from this chapter. And I want to share it with you. The first thing is... Uh, Verses 8, where it says about prosperity. See, when I'm, uh, when I'm talking about prosperity, it is not the prosperity that today's Christians preach. Today's new Christian, new uh, people preach. I'm not preaching that prosperity. It is the prosperity where you love God and God will provide for you. See, today's, in today's world, what we can see is people are just coming to faith to get something. And there are preachers who preach, you come to Jesus Christ, you have 10, you will get 100. It's like, if you have one house, no need to worry, you come to Jesus Christ, you will get three houses. If you have one car, come to Jesus Christ, you will get three more cars. So, I'm not uh, that type of a uh, preacher. I don't like to preach prosperity, but what prosperity I'm saying is, the prosperity where you love God and God will provide for you. See, I had lots of experiences like that. One, uh, I'm, a, I'm a guy who does this uh, children's ministry and VVS work. So I am with Transformers uh, team from Kerala. So I had a laptop. So I'm a special teacher to teach the students. So they asked me to come and teach their students in the VVS. I had a laptop. And this laptop was uh, a very pathetic laptop. If you want to switch on the laptop, you have to sit one day prior to op uh, on that laptop. And then you have to wait for whole 24 hours. After that, it will start working. So there was a meeting going on, I think, uh, in Sharjah. So we were, me and my wife, we were the partakers of the VBS. We were teaching the VB, uh, students. And suddenly, my laptop got and something happened it just oh it just get off and we were like so much worried what we have to do then I said to God God I want a good laptop because you know I'm uh, I'm doing your work I'm doing great ministry please provide me with a laptop and side by side I had a little bit of greed and I said to God God you know nowadays people are using uh, new smartphones and I have seen the ad of uh, iPhone 12. If you could provide me with that, I will be very much happy, Lord. So 
I prayed. I wrote this request in my uh, diary. Uh, I have a diary where I write all the prayer requests, and I wrote, and I said to my wife, please do pray for the laptop, and with that, you have to pray for iPhone 12, so that I can get an iPhone 12. After a few months, God provided me with a laptop, a very wonderful laptop. Uh, I am using it now. The day when I got the laptop, I said to God, God, see, now I got the laptop, but the phone is still missing. I want the phone. Please help me with that. And while I was saying this, a message popped up in my phone. And I thought, okay, somebody has uh, worked for me or something is going to come for me. And when I opened the phone, I saw a message showing, update your phone to Android 11. I said, okay. I updated the phone. It was almost two and a half GB. The phone is working very fine. It's very smooth. It's very fast. And then God said to me, I was praying to God and I said, God, still I didn't get the iPhone. God said, son, you don't need an iPhone. You don't need a phone. You already have a better phone in your hand. You just need this one. No, no need to go after the greed to get something extra. See, today's world, in today's Christianity, people preach the greedy things. Come to Jesus Christ. See, last days I have seen a person, a very famous person. Our brother, uh, blessed brother also preached uh, about him, uh, a little bit about him. He was uh, in a congregation and he was saying, do you want money? Do you want money? Do you want money? Raise your phones. And I'm going to pray and the funds will come into your account. See, Jesus Christ did not came to give funds. Jesus Christ came to give you the life. Jesus said, I am the, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody can enter into the heaven. If you want to see the Father, you have to go through me. Jesus Christ never said, come, I will give you money. I will give you a house. See, these are the necessity of our life. We need a house, we need clothes, we need food. God will provide it for us because he loves us. See, once uh, me and my brother, uh, our brother uh, Shine, we were uh, walking through the street and I said, you know, look, uh, look to this, uh, look around your, uh, these places. See, these places are the creation of God. God created this world for the man. If you ask if you, have, uh, if you do not have a food, go and ask to God. God will provide you with food. But don't go for greed, as our brother said. First, ask God, is it my need or my greed? So, today's world, people are after prosperity. But the prosperity which I'm speaking about is from God. When you love God, God will provide you whatever you need. Just you have to love Him. And what uh, in here we can see when uh, Ruth, where she said a statement, your God is my God. On that statement, God provided her with everything she needed. In that field, when she was gathering the grains, Boaz came to her and said, you do not need to go to any other field. This field is yours. Gather as much as you want. You can feed your whole family for the here. Do not go here and there. My friends, my fellow people of Christ, let me tell you something. When you are in need of something, God knows your need. When you ask, for, ask to God, see, in Bible, words, in Bible it says, before asking, before even thinking about that need, God knows our need. God will provide for you. You just, you just have to do is, Love him. God will provide for you. Next, verses 9. Okay. Okay. I have told the men not to touch you. See, first I talked about prosperity. Where you, if you love God, God will prosper you. God will bless you. And he will give you enough to survive. Second, there is a security when you love him. See here, see uh, according to the context, we see a 
a young lady a young lady i don't think she was more than 24 25 a young widow you know in today's world a young widow she had uh, she she may, she will be having a very very hard times in this world because there are people who are going to criticize her there are people who are going to somehow try to use her so uh, uh, while i was preaching this from uh, somewhere i t- uh, i talked about uh, me and my wife we were standing on a railway station we were going to uh, jaipur we were going to jaipur and some of the uh, young boys see she had a baby in her hand our baby in her hand but even though she had the baby they were looking at her like this okay so in today's world no girl is safe but in that moment boaz said to her do not be worried i have told the young man to do not to touch you see when we love god there is nobody who can touch us not even satan can try to destroy us see in a uh, uh, first uh, second kings chapter 6 uh, i think chapter 6 yeah in second kings chapter 6 there is a uh, uh, a story about elisha and uh, his servants uh, they were uh, in uh, palestine and they were staying in a room suddenly uh, they were surrounded by the enemies a whole hell uh, a lot of enemies surrounded them and they were just to uh, they were they were there to just kill elisha and her, and his servant so uh, during the morning servant wake woke up and he just opened the windows he, he saw lots of people armored people with uh, uh, swords and all those things were standing there to kill elisha and the servant the servant ran back to, uh, ran back to uh, elisha and he said see uh, lord just look after there are uh, very uh, very much uh, there are very much, uh, there are people who are there to destroy you there are there are people who are going to kill you what we have to do we are two people we cannot uh, fight them elisha said let me pray to god and elisha prayed to god and he said lord open his eyes and when god opened servant's eyes he saw many angels were standing on mountains see there were 1000 people on the ground to kill elisha there were 10000 angels were there to protect elisha see when we love god there is a protection for us wherever you go whatever situations you are god is there for to help you see there are many many testimonies where god protected their people there was a pastor in chatisgarh he was taken by some naxalites and because of preaching the word and they were about to kill him he prayed to god god if your will is this that i have to die in this place it's your wish is your will suddenly the indian army came there was a big gunfight somehow this pastor was ex- uh, escaped from that place there are hundreds and thousands of testimonies which says how god protected their servants the people the children when we are in god's presence when we love god he is there to protect us first thing that we came to know is prosperity when we love god god will give us whatever we need second there is a security in the presence of god when we are in the presence of god he is there to protect us as there are uh, phrases that we use in our prayer as uh, jaisa murghi apne bachchon ko pankhon tale sambhalti hai we have heard the phrase that how a, uh, a hen used to keep her chickens in her wings by protecting her from the eagle the same way god is there to protect us now the next thing we have to uh, read verse 16 verse 16 chapter 2 verse 16 yeah um okay so 
this is the moment where Boaz invites Ruth to come and eat with her, eat with him. So in Hindi and in Malayalam, there is, uh, in that translation, there is a word, word called trupt or tripti. In English, that means satisfaction. When you are in God's presence, there is a satisfaction. You know, uh, we servants of God, I said many times, many times I said, I'm a servant of God. And I am the most satisfied person in my life. You know, I used to work before, uh, before coming to this ministry line. I used to work. I was in a corporate sector. I was in an education sector for almost two to three years. Every day when I come back to my home, when I lay down on my bed, every day I had lots of thinking. Oh my God, next day these are the works. I have to do these works. There are so many uh, presentations that I have to teach the students. The next work is remaining. But when I am in God's ministry, I do not need to wor worry for anything. I am satisfied in everything. Even though I am even though I have nothing, I am satisfied in because God is there to provide for me. When you earn, see there are people who are uh, who works in many other firms in multinational companies. You can say if from your life, when you go back to your bed, when you lie down there, is there a satisfaction? Do you feel happy? Do you feel satisfied? Okay, God. I am satisfied. I have, I have done something. No. But when you are in presence of God, you are satisfied. When you love God, you are satisfied. He is going to uh, satisfy you in every need. Here in uh, Ruth's life, she was hungry. She had, uh, she, had uh, she, ha she must uh, be sitting with the other servants. But Boaz called, called her and said, come, sit with me. Eat how much you want. Satisfy yourself. See, satisfaction and uh, filling the stomach, those are two different things. See, my mother, she's here. Uh, she's a, a, a very uh, difficult person while uh, you give her something to eat because she likes to eat the normal tradition, traditionally Kerlite food. She like uh, the chore, more and all those things. She like that. So while she was here, I brought some KFC for her. And she ate that. Her tummy was full, but she said, I'm not satisfied. I don't know how, but I cannot, I can eat the whole thing, but I'm not satisfied. If you give me some little bit of rice, that is enough for me to satisfy my need. See, there are satisfaction is something very different from uh, fil uh, like fulfilling. Satisfaction is something that okay, I have done. I, okay, I am okay. I am satisfied. Now I am happy. In God's presence, you feel that happiness. In God's presence, you feel the satisfaction. In God's presence, you just not need to be unhappy for anything. God is there to provide you and satisfy you in everything. Next, in the last thing is verses 16 and 17. 17. Verses 17. Can somebody read for me? Okay. Um. Okay, so in Hindi, it was like they filled the basket. It was filled the whole basket. When she was there to gather the grains, she was gathering. And Boaz ordered the servants to just leave for her. Everything that you got, just leave for her. So that she can gather how much she can want. There is a fulfillment in Christ. There is a prosperity when you love him, when you are in the presence of God. There is a security when you are in the presence of God. There is a satisfaction in the, in the presence of God. 
there is a fulfillment in the presence of God. She was there to just gather some grain for her and her mother-in-law. But God provided her with an aid so that she can gather as much as she want for the whole life. And uh, later in chapter 3 and 4, we can see Boaz at last marries Ruth. And through that genealogy, there came a great king called David. And through David's genealogy, now we have Jesus Christ. He was the grand, grand, grandson of David. See, God, how God used Ruth in just one statement that she said, your God is my God. Only statement that your God is my God. I'm going to love your God as you love your God. See, God, we always say God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. How much of, how much, how many of us can say, I love my God? If you love your God, God is there to help you. God is there to provide for you. He will there to prosper you. He is there to protect you. He is there to satisfy you. He is there for in everything. You don't need to worry. You don't need to go after any humans. God is there to help you. God is there to protect you. God is there to work in your life. Second Corinthians, sorry, First Corinthians chapter two verses nine. Can somebody read for me? Second, uh, First Corinthians chapter two verse nine. No eyes has seen, no ear has heard, no human mind has concealed. For God has prepared for those who love him. Nobody can see, nobody can hear, no mind can predict that. God is there to work for us. Today, as we heard this sermon, let me tell you, let me encourage you, do not see, uh, uh, while we worship, we say, God, I love you, I love you. It's not like just we have to say from our mouth. We have to do it from our heart. We have to love our God. Because He loves us in any condition. Even if you are faithful, even if you are not faithful in front of Him, He still loves you. But do we love our God that's a question. Or just it's a phrase that we use in worship. God, I love you. I love you so much. Just like we say to our uh, partners. Like uh, sometimes uh, if my wife is angry, I just, just to make her happy, I say, Asha, I love you. Don't worry. I'm, I love you. But it's just to, it's just, see, I love her. It's not like I do not love her. I love her. But it's an excuse to just somehow avoid the conversation or avoid the argument. Asha, I love you. Don't worry. I'm there for you. I love you. Okay. She's there. Okay. But telling to God is, is not like God, okay, I love you. Thank you so much. But it should come from our heart. God, there is only one person whom I can love and that is you. Because in everything, you were there for me. You protected me. You, you provided me with everything. See, uh, some, uh, a few days back, when uh, our brother Blessing was preaching, he said, we have to thank him for even the oxygen that we breathe. See, there are people who, in, even in Delhi, you can know, uh, lots of pollution is there. So people cannot breathe properly, but we get the purified oxygen. See how much he loved us. For that thing, we can love him. Just for the oxygen that he gives us. Just for the food that he gives us. See, there are people, there are children who do not get the proper food. But still, God gives us everything. Even in this cold season, I, me and my brother, we were 
traveling or uh, uh, riding on our bike and I saw a child, a four or five year old child, just wearing a t-shirt, not even having a, sweat, a proper sweater. But we, we have inner, we have sweater, we have half sweater, we have jacket, we have all those things to protect ourselves. But for them, there is nothing. See, how much he loves us, that he provided us with everything. And more over that, he provided us, he gave us his life so that we can enter into the heaven. We can be with God. We can come back to his mercy. Let us close our eyes. For a moment, let us close our eyes. As we heard today's word, are we ready to say, Lord, I love you from the bottom of my heart. I truly love you, Lord. If you love him, he is there to work for you. If you love him, he is there to protect you. If you love him, he is there to satisfy you in every need. If you love him, he is there to prosper you. Because we think that our future is not secured, Lord. Where will I go? Who is there for me? Lord says, Jesus says, I am there for you. I am there for you. Let us pray to God and thank Him and say from our heart, Lord, I love you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, as we heard from your word, Lord, as we are in your presence, Lord, thank you for every goodness. Thank you for every mercy. Thank you for give us, giving us everything that we needed. Thank you for our parents. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for this church. Thank you for our pastors. Those who are there to guide us, Lord. Lord, we love you. We love you from the bottom of our heart because you are there in every single...